During the year 1942, Major Bikail's 142nd Guards Infantry Regiment was cornered against all-out shelling by the Germans. Forced to see cover, none of his men noticed when Major got buried under a pile of rubble except young Sergei. Sergei knew it was suicide to run through the bombardment and try to save his superior's life. But he didn't hesitate for a second, and he went for it. He realized after many failed attempts, the debris was too heavy for him to lift by himself. He rallied up his comrades to give him a hand, and Mikhail survived because of this bravery. For his feat, Sergei was awarded his first Medal of Military Merit, and at that time, he was only seven years old. Welcome to Nutty History, and today we are about to tell you the tale of a six-year-old soldier who fought in World War II. Sergei was only six years old when scouts of the 142nd Guards Infantry Regiment of the 47th Guards Rifle Division found him wandering in the woods. The kid soon became the son of the whole regiment, and Major McHale adopted him formally. The incident of German shelling wasn't the only time Sergei had stared into the eyes of death to save lives, despite everyone's best effort to protect him from danger. Sergei demonstrated signs of sharp wit and determination the very first time he crossed paths with a life-threatening situation. Every day, at the crack of dawn, he would report to his adoptive father, Major Bikhail. He would deliver newspapers and letters to everyone. It was during this routine that one day he heard noises behind a haystack. Realizing that the people he heard were not speaking Russian, he rushed back to Major Bikhail to report the intruders. Investigators found out that Sergei had stumbled upon scouts sent by German artillery to report back where to fire. Thanks to Sergei, the regiment avoided a big loss that day. Even in battle, he would eagerly carry water, cartridges, and grenades to the soldiers. Out of love, concern, and common sense, the soldiers would try to keep him as far away from combat operations as possible. But Sergei was a stubborn soul, who would not accept sitting on the sidelines just because of his age. On November 18, 1942, his daring attitude almost cost him his life. Sergei was awarded a small uniform with custom-made shoulder straps of his own for his enthusiasm and endearment. Unfortunately, these straps almost proved to be his undoing, as during the Battle of Stalingrad, a German airplane noticed the glimmer of the shoulder straps and fired at him. Sergei jumped for cover, but he couldn't dodge the barrage of bullets cleanly. As fate would have it, the shrapnel had found its mark on his leg and not anywhere close to vital organs. A few weeks later, Sergei surprised everybody in the regiment as he returned to the duty not only healthy but with high spirits, proudly showing off his wound mark as a badge of honor. Sergei's story is no less than epic tales of a humble warrior avenging his murdered family by killing bad guys. Sergei was only five years old and he wasted no time doing his part in helping the Red Army to get rid of Germans from Russia. Even though Sergei was a courageous little boy, he was able to enjoy some of his childhood. Born in a small village 200 miles from Moscow called Grin, Sergei had a happy life, living with his three elder brothers and mother surrounded by a beautiful forest. After Hitler tore the peace treaty between Germany and the Soviet Union, he attacked Russia. The fire of chaos burned the whole village down. Grin was a small but significant village in Russia's defense strategy. Due to the natural cover, it was a perfect spot to be converted into a base for the soldiers. The Grin people didn't complain either, and understanding the need, they were happy to do their part in the war effort. The villagers helped in every way possible, from providing food to the Red Army and assisting with defensive tasks. Most families of the village also had their able men sign up to become soldiers. Sergei's two brothers were among those volunteers. Germans were also aware of the strategic importance of Grin, and in the summer of 1942, they attacked the village, burning it to the ground. The Nazi army's assault didn't target military camps alone. They went after the villagers as well for helping the Red Army. Whole families were shot down for the crime of aiding their own army. Sergei saw his mother killed by a bullet, followed by his 10-year-old brother being dragged by the heels and hung by his neck. Sergei was dreading his impending doom when a neighbor dared to jump out of their house, grab Sergei, and pushed him out of the window facing the woods before any soldier could notice. The neighbor begged Sergei to run till his lungs hurt from breathing hard, and then keep running as far as his strength could take him. Sergei did run, but he had nowhere to run. Grin was the only home he ever knew his whole adolescent life. And the forest wasn't kind enough to give poor Sergei a clear path to any other human settlement. Afraid of going back home, 
Sergey decided to stay in the woods, and he had to scrounge for food, shelter, and water. Surviving on nothing but his sheer will, Sergey could not forget the haunting images of his mother getting shot, the empty eyes of his hanged brother, and the despair that Germans had caused to the rest of Grin. Needless to say, this was a lot for a six-year-old boy. When the reconnaissance squad of the 142nd Guards Infantry Regiment found him aimlessly wandering in the woods, they described him as a boy strongly resembling an empty body. The trauma may have broken any other six-year-old kid, but Sergei defied every expectation. When he was discovered, he was physically and psychologically in a tragic state. His body was full of pronounced scabs from insect bites. He was starving and constantly shivering. For a while, Sergei couldn't even make sense of what was happening. The scouts of the 142nd Guards Infantry Regiment wrapped him in a horse blanket and they rushed him to their camp. Sergei was agitated and, obviously, soldiers were concerned for the unfortunate child. Major Mikhail Vorobiev, who would later adopt him, couldn't believe what he saw when he laid his eyes upon this miracle of a survivor. Seeing the kid made Major and his soldiers actually confront the effects of the war. When one was in the middle of things, they couldn't focus on the grand picture. Sergei proved to be the catalyst that helped the regiment to realize how bad the war had hit their country. They were dumbfounded and unable to react at that moment. The Major himself confessed later that he was so petrified with anger that he wanted to rush to the line of German trenches and grab the first Nazi soldier he could come across by his throat and do unspeakable things for making Sergei suffer as he did. Sergei broke into tears, perhaps for the first time when the soldiers asked him about his family. Melted by his state, the regiment decided then and there to incorporate the boy into their foals and look after him until they could find a home for him. But that didn't take very long as Mikhail Vorobiev soon decided to adopt Sergei himself. Though Sergei was officially Major Vorobiev's son, every soldier in the regiment treated him like they would treat their own ward. His presence also helped to lift soldiers' spirits as he proved to be a pleasant distraction from the grim affairs of the battlefield. Soldiers would sing songs and play games or just simply chat with him to lighten the mood. He breathed life into the soldiers, helping them forget the harsh trenches. Despite carrying the trauma of everything that happened to him, Sergei was more than eager to help the Red Army in any way possible. He anointed himself as the assistant of his adopted father and became the delivery man for every soldier in the regiment. Sergei also pushed his new beloved father to come out of his shell and ask Nina Badova out, the woman who would later become his adoptive mother. Major Vorobiev and Nina would stay married for the rest of their lives. The combat path of the little soldier ended in Poland. General Vasily Chukov, commander of the 62nd Army in which the little soldier served, ordered the boy to be sent to the Suvorov Military School. In 1945, after the Soviet Union's official victory over Germany, Sergei was once again decorated for his war efforts. Rightfully proud, Chukov, now a marshal, came to the camp to hand over the medal. Along with that, he endearingly gave him a pistol. That's what they did back then. Sergei wanted to continue with his military career, but his body failed him. The downside of joining a regiment at the age of six was that he got addicted to cigarettes in his milk-drinking age. Moreover, the injury in battle and his mental health also did a number on him. Therefore, though Sergei graduated from the military academy in 1954, he had to pursue a career in law. Sergei Aleshkov became an attorney, and he lived the rest of his life in the Urals until his death. The real boy who lived made history, and with his bravery and spirit, he built a home in military camps and brought joy to a regiment facing the worst end of the war at that time. Tell us in the comments what you think of Sergei's bravery. And as always, thanks for watching Nutty History.